Greetings. Um, I'm going to try a different approach this time to some problems. Instead of just writing the given the gold uh, uh, and the formulas, I will we'll just use what is given to us because circuit's already given. Um, I'll just underline what is given from these problems here. Okay, all these things are important that we'll need later. And actually, the problem that we're going to do today is something that we'll need for the next uh, problem. This is actually uh, 20.4. We're going to need the rest of this for 21.5. But let's get into it. Uh, if you notice, I actually crossed out uh, D. We're only going to do A, B, and C. That is, um, find the impedance, find the maximum current in the circuit, and the phase angle. All those three things we're going to need later on. So. Uh, those identify the goals as well, so let me underline that in blue. Okay, and um, I'm going to go ahead and write the formulas that we'll need. Now, this one I will write down here on the side. Uh, we'll need for inductive reactants. Okay, and we'll also need the formula for capacitive reactants. Now remember, if you were listening in class, the units for these, even though these are in terms of uh, Hertz and Henry's, Hertz and uh, Farad's, that the eventual units for both of these should end up being ohms because they are like a a substitute for the value of resistance when you're talking about resistance in turn in the capacitor or, or inductor something like that something similar okay uh, we're gonna need the actual form for impedance which is based off uh, of Pythagorean theorem it needs the inductive and the capacitive reactances squared uh, we're gonna need good old Ohm's law We're actually given the maximum voltage and the impedance. And the last but not the least, we need the formula for the phase angle. Now, just like the formulas uh, for Pythagorean theorem and uh, angle for adding vectors, um, we use the inverse tangent function, trigonometric function, that is. Okay, there we go. We are good to go. So I'll go back to these formulas later um, as I go ahead and get into it. Shortcut. Uh, now, in order to find uh, the impedance, we need to find out what XL and XC are first. Okay. So I have enough memory. That's 2 pi. Frequency given is 60 hertz. Don't forget the amount of significant figures you have. And 0 0.600 henrys. Okay. Now, all I know is that it should end up value of ohms. Okay. And then use this base here for the capacitive reactance. This is the one that's 1 over the 2 pi f c. Let's see if I have enough room for this. 2 pi, yeah, plenty of room. Actually, shit, spoke too soon. Remember that your capacitance is in terms of microfarad, which actually means uh, times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, so those conversion units are important. Once again, I expect a value that turns, results in ohms okay now if you calculate those numbers you'll get the following uh, answer this is not even our main answer this is just a go between which we need to solve for later and take note look at this so the capacitive reactance is a lot bigger than the inductive reactance we'll take a look at this we're actually dividing by uh, 10 to the negative 6 so that actually makes uh, we're dividing by a really relatively small number so it results in a relatively bigger number okay so that should make sense okay then plugging in i'm just gonna put that for now uh 
um, our the resistance value of the resistor, and then the and take a look at this. We're subtracting something big from something small. This would actually result in something negative. But it's squared, so it actually becomes an even function. So it doesn't matter. Now I'll give you one guess what units this should end up with. Oops, I forgot the units there. Okay, and you end up with an impedance of the RLC circuit of 5. Let's do this red. Let's be consistent. Five eighty-eight, boom. Okay, um, and then see so if we have enough room to solve for. Now that we have that from Ohm's law, I get that the I max, not the movie. Th Okay, so something different. Um, and our maximum, because remember we're dealing with a waveform, okay? So the, apparently the maximum peak of the voltage is 150 volts divided by 588 ohms, and that should give us something in amperes according to Ohm's law. And as you can see, just by analyzing this, bigger number in the bottom, while they're on top, it results in something less than one, and sure enough, our current is almost a quarter. Okay. And last but not the least is the phase angle. So I'm just gonna plug and check it in right here, since you already have the values for the inductive and the capacitive reactants divided by the resistance okay now take a look at that all the units in ohms should cancel out because what goes in tangent should just be a unitless ratio just a ratio okay and take a look at this this will still result in something that's negative it's almost like there's a negative y positive x which quadrant is that hey um, so this should actually be something degrees. It does result in something that's negative. Okay. And so what does the negative mean? That means that it's actually moving clockwise direction. And also we know that's in quadrant number four. Okay. Remember because uh, waveforms that can be represented as vectors. And these are this, the phase angle of the the current and actually even the voltage um, resulting through all three of these electrical components. Okay? So these are our final answers. Okay, so we can go back up here and we're just using the finding the basic properties of an RLC circuit using an AC source. Okay? Hope you all enjoyed. Bye.